Hey everybody, it's Jason Waha here, and once again it is time for a dynamic effort squat and deadlift day. But a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please remember to click like down below. It'd be greatly appreciated. So in keeping with my theme of continually varying the training stimulus on these, I went with chains today. Um, I really do prefer bands. I think bands are less work for me at this point to set up. Uh, less noisy, everything else. But I do think that I benefit from rotating the training stimulus. So even though we're keeping with this bar mostly, uh, doing chains this week instead of bands, completely different training stimulus. And honestly, I care a little less about my squat right now. So I just did six sets of this, but I'm focusing a little more on the deadlift and the bench. My squat, because again, if you guys notice my quads and everything else, as long as I'm gaining muscle in the right places, doing a little bit of squatting, my squat will go up. My squat will be fine. I'm worried about the deadlift record at Worlds this year, and I'm worried about my bench coming up enough to get a decent total. Right? I want a respectable total. Uh, that's going to be important also. So the bench is going to get me a lot more because I had a lot more room to grow. So I'm putting my efforts into those more. But, you know, we're still doing the belt squats and other accessory work to make sure the squat goes up. But yeah, just six sets of the these, you know, so we'll do a training max on a squat every week. And this week I only did six sets of speed boxes. But you know what, that's enough because I'm doing 10 sets of really hard belt squats every week. So, you know, quads, adductors, glutes, everything are growing. We're working on the back a lot. So that's potentially a weak link for me in the squatting. That seemed to be my problem at the last meet. So uh, again, it should all be fine. Not that worried. Uh, I had to mess with the chains a little bit to really find the sweet spot and finding it to where I'm not bouncing off the chains or in way of my feet or the plates bouncing on them is a little bit tough when you're running a lot of chains. And honestly, I don't have enough chains. Like I run more band tension than chains. But if I don't use all the little tiny lead chains I have that I used to be using before these spud straps, I only have 150 pounds of chains. You know, I have a bunch of little small five pound chains, but they're just not really what I want here. So, you know, we ran 150 and then, you know, 205 plate weight. So it's a little more plate weight than I might run, but again, we got good bar speed and that's okay. Good bar speed. And next week we'll go back and do sumos with bands. Uh, and, and then I might do conventional with bands the week after. So uh, again, rotating the sumo and conventional on these, rotating around some bands and chains, keeping the training stress varied a little bit. You know, but we are building all the muscles of the deadlift, right? I can get away with doing what I do for max effort and then doing this speed stuff if I'm building all the muscles, right? Building the entire posterior chain, everything. So again, we did 10 doubles on these. So this is 20 total speed pulls. So we're putting quite a bit more volume into the pulling than we are the squatting. And I mean, I would say the same is gonna be true of you know the quad work versus posterior chain, which you guys will see coming up. Uh, you know, I, even though there's some posterior chain obviously involved in the belt squat, we did double the posterior chain. Also, I'm doing some network, neck work in here because again, it can help deadlift lockouts. It can help build the upper traps and stuff too. So again, five sets of 10, and these were harder today for some reason. I don't know why, but these were a little tougher than they were uh, last workout. So, you know, there's that going on, but I also noticed my low back didn't recover and we'll get to that in a minute with the posterior chain. Uh, but yeah, my, my back still has doms from doing the 10 sets of reverse hypers on Tuesday. It's like, that's not normal for me, but I'm also doing so much weighted stuff walking, you know, all the, the weight vest walks and the rucking the backpack every day. Uh, that could be, could be a factor too. And that's one reason we need to keep all of that healthy. But yeah, the, the neck extensions actually were, were difficult today. Now we get over to the belt squats and belt squats were tough. Cause I already said they were hard when I started getting up to 220 or higher. I added another five pounds, added another five pounds and yeah, they were challenging. But here's the thing, as long as my back is continues to get strong enough to stabilize and I, and I get stronger on this belt squat, I think that's really all I need for my squat to come up. I really do. All right. Cause what the squat is mostly about lean body mass leverages and again, keeping, keeping it all to where I'm doing these wide stance stuff. 
which is how I squat for a max anyways, all right, keeping it all wide. And I think the box squats, the limited amount of box squats I do there, even though it's only six sets this week, I think that contributes also because of that really wide stance I do, right, that really wide stance. Uh, so again, we're, we're getting enough hypertrophy. Uh, and I notice these have gotten better since I kind of pulled the sled drags this last week. Uh, I'm going to focus on just the weighted walking for GPP, doing more pull-ups. Also, people will note I didn't do the any rowing today, and here's why. I'm up to doing axle bar pull-ups now, like with the fat bar, every day. You know, uh, and I think between that and doing the 10 sets of inverted rows with the axle bar on my two my upper days total every week, I think we're good for lat work. I think we're good. I don't think I need it here. Uh, I don't need to fatigue myself with that extra volume because we're getting the pull-ups also. And as long as I try to get 10 sets of the pull-ups every week along with 10 sets of the inverted rows, I think we're good. I mean, that's 20 total sets from mid and upper back. Keeping in mind, I'm doing shoulder work and upright rows and stuff also on upper days. That also hits all that upper back. So I think we're pretty well in a good place there. But right now, things like triceps, you know, triceps, posterior chain, all of that's really getting a lot more volume. But I think now I'm doing everything with a fat bar. And I notice it doesn't really knock my reps down on any of that stuff. I think that's going to continue to build the grip up. Because remember when I was doing the axle bar rows, it made my pulling so much easier. Because I think for me, grip can sometimes be my issue kind of where it gets a little soft at my lockout and stuff sometimes so the axle bar work should do that but what we have to do with all this stuff though is i've got to look at all the volume and make sure i'm recovered workout to workout that's the whole point with conjugate especially with the max work versus the speed work is making sure we're recovered by the time we get around to the training maxes again the next week okay that is critical and if I'm getting DOMS lasting this long going into Friday in my low back, I've got to adjust the low back work. Now, I do think doing the, the 10 sets, a couple workouts in a row, has helped me get stronger real fast on that. It's helped me get stronger real fast. So I noticed I was able to progress again on the reverse hyper, even though I only did five sets. But I'm like, let's go ahead and go back and do the glute ham raises. So my lower accessories for now, for today, were, you know, five sets of belt squats, five sets of glute ham raises, and then five sets of reverse hypers. But now we're really pushing the progression on this stuff. Now these, I, I don't really progress much beyond this. This is pretty much what my hamstrings seem to be able to handle. Progression is going to come really difficult on any sort of glute ham raise. But I also don't want to really regress. I'm worried about hamstrings turning into a weak link again on the deadlift, and we can't afford that. I feel like things like glutes, glutes and grip may, or actually low back more than anything, and grip may be my limits. But as long as we're progressing on the reverse hypers, I think we're okay there. And I'll start finding out over the next week or two. That deficit pull this week felt good. I was very confident with that. I feel like my deadlift is on a nice little upswing now because uh, that training max this week was actually wasn't really a max. You guys saw I held it at the top and did a slow eccentric setting it down. I left a lot in the tank there. Okay, I left something in the tank. So I'm happy with that. So we're going to keep working. I want to do a, more deficits than anything because deficits are harder. Okay, I want to do more deficits so that I'll just rip that bar off the floor. <laughs> when, when I get to, to competition, and go to the deadlift bar with a normal pull off the floor. We should get great speed out of the bottom. And I just need to be able to follow through. And so we got to build a low back, the grip, glutes, all that stuff. But I also don't want the hamstrings to regress. And that's the other thing with the hamstrings. Glute ham raise. This improves your squat. And people will go, but the, the hamstrings are not a primary mover in the squat. And I know they aren't. And I agree. They don't even get hypertrophied that well by the squat. It's very minimal in studies. What do they do though? Strong overdeveloped hamstrings can put us into a, a better bar path position for a power squat. Okay, it lets us sit back easier. 
and if we can sit back easier and have a strong enough back to stabilize it, you can move more weight. You can usually move more weight. And that's going to be the idea. Now the reverse hypers, I, I dropped it down to just five sets. But we went up another 10 pounds. Went up another 10 pounds. Of course, we got one hell of a low back pump from it. Got a hell of a low back pump. I went back up and doing 410 now for five sets of 10. All right, I want to keep progressing on this. I, I want to get to, but by meet time, I want to be doing my sets of 10 with at least 500. Okay, and this is going to help build that deadlift up. It's going to help build that deadlift up, particularly through my weak points. And let's come over and talk about the squat. Help me keep that chest up more when I sit way back. It'll help with that. So again, it's pretty important that I stay on top of these and I'm going to push the progression on these. I'm pushing the progression on those belt squats. Glute ham raises, I'm just going to do what I can do. I'm going to do what I can do. But those tend to be the hardest for me to progress on at this point because I'm already good at them. So uh, yeah, should be fully recovered and when next week rolls around, hopefully we'll get some nice good maxes. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.